All right, guys, we're going to welcome back to the Rhythm College Football Podcast. Today, me and Nick are on a preview and prediction for the 2023 Northwestern Wildcats. Looking at this coaching staff, a complete shakeup out of nowhere, Nick. David Braun just arrived over from North Dakota State, and he had no idea what he was getting himself into. He's going to be the acting head coach this season after Pat Fitzgerald, who's been on staff since 2001, was fired on July 10th. Three days earlier, he was suspended by Northwestern for two weeks following an independent investigation that appeared to confirm some allegations made by a player in November of 2022 regarding some hazing incidents. Um, and at the end of the investigation, the accusations were largely supported by evidence. Now, obviously, you know, according to a tweet by Adam Rittenberg, where he posted the statement released by the team, the players and the coaches, they pushed back against these allegations. They called them exaggerated and twisted. They said that coach Pat Fitzgerald had no knowledge or involvement in the allegations. This is a team that's coming off 11 straight losses, Nick. They built a $260 million practice facility back in 2018, a very nice complex, the Ryan Fieldhouse. And they also had this $800 million stadium project that was supposed to get underway. It appears that has been halted all of a sudden. This is just a complete disaster. Any way you put it, Nick, this really came out of nowhere, kind of the story of the summer. Seems to be a lot more here than we originally thought, though, that has led to Fitzgerald's dismissal. Obviously, he's been around a long time, one of the most underrated coaches in college football, incredibly loyal to this program. Now he's gone all of a sudden. What do you make of this entire situation so far? It's just ugly anywhere you look. The rumors of allegations of hazing began sometime after July 4th. Discussions online about potential investigation by an outside law firm into Northwestern, into Pat Fitzgerald. Of course, Pat Fitzgerald, you know, very legendary figure at Northwestern, played there himself in the 90s, you know, was part of that team that won the Rose Bowl in 1995, I believe, you know, which was kind of a program defining victory for this team they needed to win that they got really you know, kind of jump started what was a very stagnant program that just kind of really did not have anything going for them they were struggling for years you know obviously northwestern is known as a very you know a large you know very academic focus school very talented academic focus school in chicago obviously right so they won the rose bowl against usc very important win in bowl history for this program pat Fitzgerald took over in 2006 after randy walker passed away and he kind of just brought it back to stability and what and started to produce results slowly over time. Won bowl games, won division, you know, division titles, you know, played in, in the conference title game twice. They won the 2018 Big Ten West, 2020 Big Ten West. All these things for Northwestern seem to be a big figure that, you know, the footprint of Northwestern was expanding. They played in Ireland last year. They're hosting a game at Wrigley Field this year against Iowa, right? So this is, these are important things that is happening for the program. Pat Fitzgerald, he was, he claimed he was a wildcat for life and it seemed like that was going to hold true. His legacy there is certainly understood. He's the winningest coach in history. And this kind of shakes this all straight up, right? This, the allegations are vile. Simply put, they're, they're, they're terrible. They're terrible. They're disgusting. And they do not fit in the sport of football. Football already has a bad reputation among parents who are letting their kids get involved. It's a dangerous, rough sport. When you have allegations like this show up, it's shocking. Quite frankly, Northwestern is the last school in America that I would have thought this sort of incident would be happening. It, it really caught me by surprise, especially if a coach like Pat Fitzgerald, who's been around the program, like I said, for so long. There's a lot of question marks. And now David Braun steps into a complete disaster. Braun, I mean, he has never been a head coach at all in his career. His highest position was defensive coordinator at FCS level, and now he's an FBS head coach. That is an incredible jump to make overnight. Certainly a tough transition for a guy like Braun, who, don't get me wrong, I think he's a fantastic defensive coach. If you watch the tape at North Dakota State the past couple of seasons, they're a very good defensive team. A lot of their talented players end up at FBS levels, schools transferring out. So Braun can certainly coach. It's, it's similar to another Big Ten program in Penn State. You know, obviously the allegations of what happened at Penn State was totally different, but Bill O'Brien took over what was a damaged program facing sanctions from the NCAA and sort of had to guide them and rebuild them at that point. He had no previous head coaching experience. So I think it's very similar to the two positions the programs kind of find themselves in. It's very shocking, you know, the new stadium deal. Obviously, Northwestern fans were excited about that. Very deep pockets in Chicago and get a footprint in there and be a big attraction in what is really a very popular city with a lot of things going on could have helped the program but this is just a gut punch to come late in the cycle like this very tough to deal with i really don't know what direction northwestern goes from here yeah pat fitzgerald released a statement afterwards saying that him and the university had an agreement uh on a resolution which was that two-week suspension they ended up revoking that and he's now hired a law firm to protect his rights in accordance with the law resolving that contract so obviously there's going to be a lot more fallout from this 
Um, and the scandal was more than just, uh, you know, hazing. I think there's been some allegations now of racism as well, which obviously these are some very serious allegations. So moving forward for Pat Fitzgerald, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I expect him, not maybe not this year, but next year, you know, within the next year and a half or so, we'll probably take a quiet job somewhere on a staff that's not going to be too, you know, talked about too much, kind of like DJ Durkin went to the Falcons following his ousting at Maryland. What do you think is next for Pat Fitzgerald, Nick? Because these are some significant allegations at the end of the day. And what do you think's next for Northwestern? I think this is not a move they wanted to make one bit. They would have probably already made it considering the last couple of years. They've not been all that great. 1-11 after a 3-9 and nine campaign. And this team certainly has that occasional success during his tenure. And he's been great for this program. They had to do something they really didn't want to. They've not had a different head coach since 2005. He's been there that long. A former alumni as well. So obviously this is an ugly look all the way around Northwestern. What do you think they're going to do next? And then also for Pat, what do you think is going to happen next? Because this has to be resolved, and I think eventually it will. And it could end up being very ugly. And you don't want to be a program that jumps into the fire by hiring this guy and have to deal with that also. This is certainly a deadly blow for a program like Northwestern. Like I said, Northwestern, you're not really known for their dominance athletic. But, I mean, he really helped this team and got them some to significant milestones. Three 10 win, or two 10-win seasons and a 9-win season in his tenure as Northwestern head coach, overall 110 and 101 head coaching record, five bowl game wins, including a Citrus Bowl win over Auburn, a Holiday Bowl win as well. You know, these are some solid victories that they picked up: a Pinstripe Bowl win, Music City Bowl, Gator Bowl, division titles, two division titles, two appearances in the division title in the conference title game. Really, you no know, gave school like you know, looking at a school like. Ohio State a run for the money in two games, especially the one in 2020, the COVID shortened season. They gave Ohio State a run for their money. That was a close game. A lot of people wondered how close that game would be. You know, you and I both agreed that that would be a close game, and it was. Pat Fitzgerald really got the guys excited for that. This is damaging for Northwestern. The stadium deal is in flux. You know, sort of the direction and totally is in flux. Like I said, they've been playing some higher profile appearances. They had that game in Ireland. They got the game at, at Wrigley Field, which I believe is still going on at this point. I haven't heard anything about the game at Wrigley Field being canceled or anything like that. But that's a tough look, certainly, right now. As for Fitzgerald, certainly going to sit out at least a year or two, kind of just let the dust settle, and will most likely take some sort of defensive or offensive consulting role with a team in an analyst role with one of the bigger programs. You know, don't be shocked if Alabama's in the mix, certainly Texas, another school I can see being involved in an analyst role potentially, and then finding his way to potentially coaching as a head coach at FCS level or low FBS level before, you know, kind of settling there, maybe being involved as defensive coordinator, kind of like Durkin is how he's kind of found his way as defensive coordinator. I think it's going to take some time kind of run away from Pat Fitzgerald. It's going to be with him for a while here. Obviously, there's the whole legal ramification as well. Clearly, he's being involved in some sort of legal action against Northwestern. He's retained counsel and performing some sort of lawsuit at this point. So that's going to have to sort itself out as well. And there could be, you know, a package of severance package of money of some sorts and things of that nature. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in the courts as well. You were in fact correct. Uh, he did have three 10 win years at Northwestern. He was also 4-0 in his last four bowl games. So plenty of success when they were good. Hard-nosed football team. Looking at this year's offense, though, for Northwestern, Mark Barjakan, he's going to be offensive coordinator. Been in that role since 2000. This offense last year, Nick, was not good at all. That's certainly been the story the last two years. 128 then points per game, and they only returned two starters. I mean, that right off the bat is all you really need to know about this offense. It means it's probably going to struggle pretty good this year. They do add Ben Bryant from Cincinnati, a good pocket passer with above average arm strength. Accuracy and velocity doesn't waver when he's on the move. Needs some better feet, though. Uh, you know, his fundamentals overall aren't that sound, but at 6'3", 213, he's a typical sound passer that needs some improvements under pressure. Navigates the pocket well and has some football IQ. So I think Ben Bryant could maybe be a bit of a saving grace here. His supporting cast isn't all that good. You know, they lose Evan Hull, who was a dual-threat game-breaker for them. Did so much for this football program. Cam Porter, a tough-nosed runner. Hasn't really flashed much production, but he certainly has showed toughness and the ability to be a workhorse in the past. And they look at a wide receiver, you know, they lose their top three pass catchers. They do return Bryce Critz. Only had 19 grabs for 212 yards. Didn't find the end zone. They added Cam Johnson from Arizona State. A.J. Henning from Michigan. And then they have two solid tight ends in Marshall Lang and Thomas Gordon. Both had double-figure double receptions. But over the last, I don't know how many years, Nick, this receiving core for Northwestern has never really been that strong to begin with. And that's obviously going to be much harder now as they lose a solid bit of production. Very interested to see what Ben Bryant can do. But it's going to be an uphill battle for him in this Northwestern program. Obviously, the last couple of years, quarterback has not been a good position for them. Even with the transfers they added, you know, Hunter Johnson, a former five-star being one. Peyton Ramsey was pretty solid for them. 
Uh, but top to bottom, this program on offense has been going downhill for the last couple of years, and I think it's at the all-time bottom right now, just as the rest of the program is too. Certainly a tough spot for this offense. Cam Porter's not a bad back. I like his physicality. He had 286 yards on the ground this past season. Two scores for him. Losing Evan Hull's tough, nearly 1,000 yards for Hull. Very talented player overall. I really liked Evan Hull at the Senior Bowl. Porter takes over that kind of range. You know, going to be a tough transition, but Porter, I think, is a good back. Got some nice potential. Bryce Kurtz as well, their only returning receiver. 19 grabs for him, 212 yards receiving, 11.2 yards per catch. Those are the numbers. That's your returning production wide receiver right there. Very low numbers, obviously. A bunch of new faces here with Henning and Johnson. Two solid pickups out of the portal. Some freshmen should get involved early on. And Ben Bryant, I like him a lot coming over to Cincinnati. Good pocket passer. I'm a big fan of the size. You know, 6'3", 2, 13 is fantastic size, in my opinion. Good football IQ, so certainly a good player to have. But when the capacity has around him it's just this poor it's really tough to set any expectations very high for him i give this offense an f despite the offensive line actually being a pretty serviceable unit peter skronsky of oh you know an elite first round pick he was a complete brick at left tackle he now departs they only get back two guys up front who got good snaps caleb turin at right tackle he wasn't all that bad for them and josh preby at guard he allowed only one sack it was an all-around good offensive line for this football team that's obviously been a bit of a staple in this program for the wildcats is a tough physical offensive line but they do lose plenty of skill and a good bit of experience and that luxury left tackle they don't have that anymore nick you know you put up 14 points per game last year and the year prior than that it was around the same number i would imagine and that's when he had skronsky there he was a great player he was just a great individual player didn't seem to really boost this offense much one bit which that's no fault of his own nobody else really picked up a slack around him and now he's gone f for me I'm not really sure what this offense is going to do this year. I mean, maybe they can hit 18 points per game this year. That's being generous. Not really sure, but the ceiling is not very high one bit. Don't expect much out of this unit this season. Certainly the ceiling is very low for this offense. I mean, standout piece and was a terrible offense. And, you know, he couldn't do all the work by himself. Obviously, he gets drafted. He gets his reward for, for great effort and great film out of him. The offensive line has some positives. There are some talented pieces there that can provide some, you know, the, the right side's not bad at all, but certainly this offense is going to sh- this year. There are so many question marks on this offense, and I'm certainly concerned for this offense, and F is definitely the right grade. Look at the defensive side of the ball, and they certainly had some impressive bouts in spurts. They were pretty solid against the pass, which was certainly expected considering who they returned in the secondary. Fourth fewest passing attempts faced by his defense, though, so certainly a bit of a skewed number to a degree. They were considered a strong two coming into the year. I thought they played pretty admirably. They return only five starters. You know, you lose four guys in the portal. You pick up three. Look at the defensive line. Aiden Hubbard, you know, he's going to step into a full-time role. Wasn't really good one bit last year. Najee's story on the interior deep line. Bit of the same story for him. You know, Matt Lawson was a quite good player for Fresno State in his rotational role. Only 6'1", 283, though, doesn't provide much size. Sean McLaughlin provided some good run stopping at times at the other edge position. Production hard to find. Team only had 18 sacks in the run defense the last couple years, Nick, much like last year, was not very good. Remember, they gave up, what, like 700 yards to Ohio State in that Big Ten title game where they probably could have won that contest, but they gave up so much yards on the ground, it just wasn't possible. What are your thoughts on what they've been able to do in the trenches, which isn't much, don't have much depth, and outside of just one guy, Sean McLaughlin, there's not much here. McLaughlin is a good play. 30 total tackles for him, four tackles for loss, no sacks. Definitely an issue for me, no sacks for one leading players on the defensive line at right edge rusher is a tough spot to see no sacks he's got to find a way to get some sacks Najee story story aiden hubbard they both have to step up story 25 total tackles two tackles for loss and a sack hubbard 17 total tackles a sack and tackle for loss one of each of those you know gotta see production up right here i think some of those guys are pretty solid players but they got to find a way to get after the quarterback team only had 18 sacks total last year that number is just far too low you look at the linebacking core, you know, one thing that could be said about Pat Fitzgerald is during his tenure, his linebackers were some of the best in the game. They knew how to play football. Two-time Bronco Nagurski award winner in his own right. Fitzgerald was a great coach for the position. Obviously, he was elite when he played that position for the Wildcats back in the 90s. And these guys are just going to be really good again this year. It's not going to linger a long, long term, but, you know, they're going to try and get everything they can out of guys like Bryce Gallagher, Xando Mueller. You know, Gallagher's been around forever, it seems. He was a really good run stopper, phenomenal tackler for them. Mueller was a highly productive player. He was also very reckless, though. Often was out of position or had bad pursuit. 27 missed tackles for him. 
Grayson Metz was an efficient linebacker. You know, Rod Hurd, nearly 800 snaps, but wasn't all that good for them. Plenty of experience and depth at linebacker. It's probably the best group on the team by far. But like I said, Nick, long term, this is not going to last with the departure of Fitzgerald. That's one thing that certainly is going to leave a legacy is that his middle of his defense is certainly knew how to play football and they did it very well with fundamentals tenacity and all around just toughness certainly tough hard-hitting linebackers Gallagher and Muller two returning bright spots really the only thing that's positive returning for this team this year Gallagher 100 total tackles this past season finally hit that century mark five tackles for law one and a half sacks for him well, 87 total tackles, 10 and a half tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, two picks for him. Really, you know, kind of do it all linebacker, very versatile player, good player to have returning there. I think this linebacking core, obviously, it's very talented. These guys got good experience. These guys are veterans. They've been around the program for a while. Very talented linebackers. And really the only bright spot of what is, a, is a, an absolute mess right now. Look at the secondary, you know, the loss of Cameron Mitchell and A.J. Hampton out wide. Certainly going to plague them. Theron Johnson, Garrett Hollis. They weren't all that good in coverage, even though Hollis was pretty stout versus the run. Those are going to be the replacements as the starting corners. Jeremiah Lewis did a good job of being a versatile DB. He was good versus the run. Wasn't exactly great in any one category, but did line up all over. He was a third leading tackler on the team. They were counting on Coco Azima. He only ended up playing in three games. He had 20 tackles in those contests. So they're definitely going to enjoy his return. Devin Turner, Garner Wallace got some good experience as backup safety, but neither exactly flashed much. Again, they were 13th last year against the pass, but they had the fourth fewest attempts in FBS. If they were, you know, 55th to 60th, I would feel like this number would be a lot different. Um, remains to be seen, though. I mean, yards are such a premium on the ground against Northwestern, Nick. Does the secondary really even matter? It does not really matter at this point. I mean, secondary, there is some talent here, but overall, just a tough spot for total for this defense. Really not a whole lot of talent here to look at. You know, I think there are some guys that I like. I think when you return a guy like Rod Harrell, who had 67 total tackles and five, four tackles for loss. Saw numbers, but losing Cameron Mitchell is a big loss. Very talented piece to lose. He had nine pass breakups. Overall, he was really you know, heart and soul of that secondary. The secondary is going to be in for a tough season, certainly. And now, for a grade, I'm going to go C+. Plus. I like what they have at the linebacking position. I think some of those safeties could certainly get involved. Coco Azim, I think, is going to have a big year. And then the versatility uh, overall, what they have, I think, is pretty solid. But not much here for me. I think, you know, obviously they need to be more sturdy against the run, better in the red zone. I think maybe many people felt with Fitzgerald coming back, the hiring of David Braun, a new defensive coordinator, they would certainly start the uptick a little bit because occasionally they're pretty good on defense. It's hard to be consistent in a program like this, but they certainly do showcase some flashes on defense. It's obviously not going to be the case anymore. I agree. You know, the linebacking core has always been good. Yeah, they were good against the pass and limited sample size this past season. The secondary does return some players, but overall 28 points per game. And this is not a great number to give up 191 yards per game on the ground, 110th in the nation. Not a great number. Losing a guy like Fitzgerald, who is a defensive-minded coach, certainly a big loss as well. This defense will continue to struggle, as will the rest of this team. Now going to the schedule preview and prediction. You know, things are really going to be tough for this program. They're already at rock bottom. Now that things get even worse with the dismissal of Pat Fitzgerald offensively, they don't return much. Only two starters, and they were already one of the worst in college football a year ago. Ben Bryant coming in might give them some life. You know, they were scoring 114 points per game, and an elite tackle is among one of those departures. Not much growth is expected there. You know, the defense is strong in the middle. The safety group is something to monitor, but the rest of the unit really isn't expected to do much outside of the ordinary. Program has some hope with some impressive new facilities, but the new stadium project is now on hold following these allegations. Just overall, some really dark times for Northwestern, Nick. I have them going 1-11. I do have them losing at home to UTEP. This is a team that returns a veteran quarterback in Gavin Hardison, some guys on defense like Tyrese Knight, Keenan Stewart, a veteran football team I think is going to come on the road, and they're going to beat Northwestern. I do have them winning against Howard at home on October 7th. In terms of just peer scheduling, I think this isn't bad at all at Duke. That's going to be an interesting game, a very tough Blue Devil squad. They host Minnesota and Penn State, like you said, November 4th against Iowa at Wrigley, Wrigley Field. They host Purdue. I don't think this is a horrible schedule. Over, under, is at three and a half. If Pat Fitzgerald was there, I'd say maybe you have an opportunity to hit that over, but now it's a slam dunk under for me. Only wins to be over this FCS program, and yes, again, they will lose to the Miners on September 9th. Certainly a slam dunk under for me. UTEP, very good program. Yeah, it's at home, so Northwestern might get the edge there. But with everything going on, this is going to be a tough season overall. The game at Wrigley is certainly interesting, but now, you know, who knows what's going to happen there. Overall, the schedule is not too difficult, but right now, this team just lacks talent. They're in absolute turmoil, complete mess of a program right now. 111 is the only pick here for me. 
you know, I think maybe you get lucky and beat UTEP. But other than that, I think this is going to be a 111. The under slam dunk, absolutely. This team is a complete disaster right now. And they're in really unprecedented territory. These hazing allegations are certainly some of the most severe we've seen in college football in a very long time. A lot of question marks what the NCAA will do here from here and what Northwestern will do from here. A lot of question marks overall. It's going to be a tough season for Northwestern fans to ride out. They do play Rutgers uh, on the road on a Sunday, first week of the year. So that will be something that more eyes will be on for sure. 1-11 last year, they're going to follow it up this season. And like you said, the biggest thing to monitor this year is not going to be the play on the field, but what happens off the field, no doubt, should be interesting to see how that unfolds. That's going to be it for today's episode, Nick. I enjoyed talking to you about Northwestern despite these tar- dark times for this football program. Pat Fitzgerald was certainly one of the more underrated coaches. Uh, very uncharacteristic allegations here, but we'll see what happens. Certainly difficult times for college football. Tough topic to talk about. Certainly shocking nonetheless, you know. Did not expect this to come out of Northwestern of all programs. He gave me a list of programs I could have guessed that there could have been potential hazing allegations at Northwestern. Would have been right towards the dead of the bottom, to be honest with you. This absolutely blows my mind. I can't believe this happened at a program like Northwestern. Very disappointed and very interested to see where this goes as a whole. Very tough situation overall for all parties involved. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.